champion to lose as Sherwin Davis pulls off the upset. Well, we have a four-round light heavyweight bout for you. Roger Bowden and Troy Ross from the Cintas Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller Highlight. Troy Ross from Toronto, Canada, making his professional debut. He is a two-time Olympian, represented Canada in the 96 and 2000 Olympic Games, a five-time Canadian national amateur champion. Making his pro debut, tipping the scale at 175 pounds, Troy Ross. Ross is southpaw, born in Guyana, now fighting out of his Canada. Opponent in the blue his corner. opponent is Roger Bowden. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio. From Cincinnati, Ohio two this young and man one. is undefeated with in one knockout. He works as a cook here at the University knockout. of Cincinnati. Well, actually, at the at University of Cincinnati. We're at Xavier pounds. in Cincinnati. Cincinnati, welcome, Roger. Father of four. Bowden. He and wife Angelina have four, four children. So Bowden and Ross will square off. The referee is Tom Cleary. Reds, come over here. Pay attention, both of you now. I gave you your instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands. They'll be good and loud, okay? Anything from anybody? Bowden with the height Anything advantage. The seconds? Touch gloves. Let's six go. Six foot two. Go back. Well, he is 32 years of age. Had a lot of amateur bouts. Got a late start in the pro game. Well, his opponent, Troy Ross, has had a lot of amateur bouts represented Canada on two Olympic teams, the 96 team and the 2000 team. Also, he's a southpaw. So we begin round number one. This is a four-round bout. Ross in the black trunks, Bowden in the white. As you mentioned, Bowden turning pro late, 32 years old. He's trying to make up for lost time, staying very active. This is his fourth fight in two months. Hey, what about the anxiety? We talked about Dante Craig, who was upset tonight, stopped by Sherwin Davis in the third round. Ricardo Williams will be fighting later on. He's a Cincinnati product. What about for Ross? This isn't his hometown, but it is his pro debut. What kind of butterflies is he going through right now? The same as the Americans making their pro debut. Anybody that makes their pro debut, even though you've had a lot of fight in this case, Ross, they both get slow each other on the floor, get tangled up. In this case, Ross had 100 amateur fights. But until you go through the process, until you're christened, as we like to say in the business, with your first pro fight, you're not sure if everything's going to be all right. The first pro fight many times for a young fighter, no matter how good they've been in the amateur, is the most important fight. You want to be careful with that first opponent. Yeah, this game is mental, Bob. And hey. mentally, even though they've had a lot of amateur fights, they're going into pros. Hey, there's a lot of glitter on the body of Bowden. I don't know if that came from his warm-up robe or what, but he's got glitter on his chest and on his head. And I'm surprised they didn't make him wipe that all off because that could get in the eye of Ross. Yes, it could. Difficult style so far, even though it's just a defensive style by both. It's all up to Ross to make the fight. Ross wasn't coming forward. The referee would have to talk to both fighters because there would be no battle. Step back, step back. Come on, God, let it go. Ross a little over anxious because of the style of Bowden. Overshooting his shots as he sees Bowden stationary for a moment. The corner of Ross is going to have to tell him, work your way in with the jab, but be under control. Be ready to stop on a dime. Don't overshoot the man as you get close. They did a nice thing of shooting a straight hand to the body, then he got caught with a counter shot. You mentioned that Ross is the shorter man. And you 
can multiply the multiply the problems that you have with the short man, with the taller man when he moves the way Moulton moves. Troy Ross. Over and over. Look at Want to get lucky? Odeon Films invites you to spend one night at McCool's. You could win a fabulous weekend getaway for you and three friends to Las Vegas, courtesy of Signature Vacations, or a Skechers prize pack valued at $300. Enter online at odeonfilms.com or at any participating Skechers retailer. Get lucky. Don't miss one night at McCool's. In theaters everywhere, April 27th. Test your sports trivia knowledge on TSN and tune in to win with the TSN Playbook. A six-night all-inclusive first-class trip for two across Canada aboard Via Silver and Blue. A his and hers pair of Laureate watches finished in 23-karat gold from Wittenauer or one of two Casio digital cameras. Weekly prize updates in the Ottawa Sun and Toronto Sun. Pick up your TSN Playbook at participating Via Rail and SO locations. Hit tsn.ca slash playbook for complete details. Guys, switch to Mach 3. Three blades for the closest shave in a single stroke. You'll love the difference. And so will we. Mach 3. From Gillette. When I get in the zone, it's just me and the ball. Bring it on. It all comes down to one season, one game, one inning, one at bat, one moment. That's what I'm talking about. Jays, Rangers, TSN, Tuesday and Wednesday. Can you see it? Live it. TSN. Corner of Troy Ross, Careful. Teddy. He did, he did it once in the first round, but they asked him, stop winging your punches, just shoot straight shots right to his chest. Yeah, because the chest is not moving. When you have a style, styles is what it's all about in this business. When you have a style like a boat moving all the time, you want to try something stationary to land on just so you can set up your other punches. Ross making his pro debut in the black trunks, five-time Canadian national amateur champion, two-time Olympian. Lunges with a left hand and shoots a shot to the body. Come here. See, the key here, the advantage, no doubt, is to the shorter Ross when he gets close to the taller Bowden. Ross has to be under control when he gets close, as I mentioned before. Not get tied up. He's in such a hurry to get in there because of the style. The defensive style, Bowden, that he has to make sure he controls that anxiety. When he gets in there, he's not too close. This way he can do something. Dave, what would you make of Ross's hand speed? Looks like he has good hand speed. Again, a little over anxious to the head. Style Bowden can make you over anxious. That's where you have to call on your composure, your professionalism. And of course, as you mentioned, it's a little bit more difficult for Ross being in his first pro fight. It's not just speed. You made a good point. What about the hand speed of Ross? Well, it's not just speed. It's not just technique. It's not just ability in that way. It's the ability to compose yourself under pressure and to adjust, to use whatever talent you may have, depending on the situation you're in. That's probably the most important quality you can have. That time, good job by Ross. Got in, didn't smother himself, didn't overshoot himself. He was set on his feet. He stopped on a dime. Hey, does he need to work the jab a little bit? Yeah, he should be using the jab. He's not using it because he's got in his mind he's looking for one big shot, which he just about landed with that right hook that time. But he should use that jab. Even if it doesn't land the way he wants it to land, the way it would land with a more conventional opponent, at least it will do a job. Jab can do a lot of different jobs. It doesn't have to land all the time. It can keep your opponent busy, set up your other shots. 
Again, Ross got close where he wants to be, the shorter guy. Over anxious, went to the head. Ross is the cousin of Egerton Marcus, silver medalist from the 1988 Olympics. See, the temptation is there. You can feel it. He's got a man in front of him who's hard to hit. He's pouring with the jab, looking to land that left hand. You're right, he needs to snap it. Box out, box out. Let it go, let it go. Come here, come here. One. Got a little SUV and a big load? Good luck. But Dodge Durango is different. With two big, beefy Magnum V8s to choose from, you can pull up to 7,500 pounds, which puts Durango ahead and your boat behind you. Durango, different and just right. Now with five-star protection, it's peace of mind that comes with all 2001 Dodge Durangos. There's always something good going down at Mr. Sub, including this year's It's in the Bag contest. Buy any sub or wrap with any Coca-Cola product and get free snack size respites and your chance to win great prizes like a 2001 Ford Focus ZX3. One of 10 cruise holidays on Carnival Cruise Lines where you'll enjoy superb dining, lavish entertainment, and exciting destinations. Or millions worth of Mr. Sub's super food values at Mr. Sub winnings in the bag. There's always something good going down at Mr. Sub. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking of going back to school, taking IT at Herzing College. IT? Isn't that more for guys? You know, computers. Of course, that's not to say that you or any woman can't be good at IT. Herzing, they're big in IT. Microsoft, Cisco, everything. And for a woman, you could work full-time, part-time, take time off to have... I'll do the dishes. Call Herzing at 416-599-6996 or see us online at herzing.com. Learn. Earn. Win. Join Rod Smith on TSN Sports Desk weeknights at 6.30 Eastern. Rod Smith brings you up-to-the-minute headlines, highlights, breaking sports news stories, in-depth reports, and features. All supported by Canada's award-winning sports newsroom, TSN Sports Desk, and the TSN team of experts. Join Rod Smith on Canada's number one source for sports news and information. Weeknights at 6.30 Eastern on TSN Sports Desk. We're at the Sintas Center on the campus of Xavier University in Cincinnati, Ohio. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller High Life. Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas. You just tuned in. You missed Paolo Bidos, the heavyweight from Italy, score a first-round stoppage of Bobby McGraw. Cincinnati's own Dante Craig was stopped in the third round by Sherwin break, Davis. Break, break, right here. Let the it Olympian go. was Let stunned right here. Let it go. Bobby, with a couple of left hands and right hands. 258 of the third round coming up in the main event. Michael Lerma, Bronco McCart, 10-round junior middleweight bout. And Ricardo Williams, the silver medalist from the U.S. Olympic team against Damian Guetta. See how easily Bolton avoided that left hand from the southpaw Ross? You know why? Because Ross was pouring. Pouring with the right jab. Hey, I knew the left hand was coming. You knew the left hand was coming. Guess what? Both knew the left hand was coming. That's why Ross needs to snap that jab, even if it doesn't land. He wings a right hook to the body. He's I'll tell you the other thing he's not doing, which his corner has said to do, and you have said to do, is throw those straight shots right to the chest of Bowden. Two reasons he's not doing that. One. This is his pro debut. Little old anxious wants to impress too much. Two, very difficult style to be in there with, especially in the pro debut. Defensive-minded man who wants to survive, not win. And a lost mouthpiece. When a man Step just wants again. to survive, as it seems Step Bolton wants to do, 32-year-old Bolton, that again and I'm it's it. very difficult to that's knock right. him out. Come here. Come here. But. There are still certain things that you should be doing, Put them up. as you touched on. Using your jab, staying true to your fundamentals. Knockout doesn't come, you beat him up for four rounds. Like he's trying so hard to punch through Bolton. Come here, give me a break, give me a break. Come here. It's like a pitcher that can throw 99 but can't get, get it over, over the plate. Bolden's letting his mouthpiece go. Second time he's done that. I'm sure the referee's going to warn him soon. That mouthpiece doesn't stay you in your point. mouth. And if the oh, referee yeah. thinks that, that he's purposely letting it come out of his mouth, well, then come the referee here. can take points away. One. No, no, 
you're right here. One point. One point. One point. In fact, you know what, Bob? Fuck. I believe that's what he's doing. <laughs> Tom Cleary did it. And Bolton wouldn't even allow his trainer to put the mouthpiece in. He was just standing there. And they were giving him advice. And referee Tom Cleary got a little tired of that. Good job by the ref. He wants to do everything he can. Bolton has done a better job in this fight of tackling than he has of punching. That's the second time he's tackled. You put that in there. I have a funny feeling, Bolton. Just watch. I could be wrong. Come here, Bolton. Come here. May not want to be in there no anymore. Sometimes him, there's what different ways Bob you can get yourself out of there. You can spit your mouthpiece out. You can tackle a man. You can push a man. Bite his can, ear. You can get disqualified. Exactly right. Exactly right. Let's watch. Of course, it's up to what was done to make Bolton want to do those things. Peppers on a couple of shots. Let it go, let it go right now. Let it go. On. Let it go, Roger. Let it there go. goes the mouthpiece go. once again. Out of the mouth of Bolton. Will three times be a charm for Bolton. This is where Ross should be going to the body. Step back. Step back. Which one? Oh, thanks, Bob. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if everyone was as dependable as your factory-trained Honda technician? Come in for a genuine Honda oil and filter change. It's only $26.88 every day. Don't open your hood to strangers. Here? Bring it home. To Honda. Well, folks, I'm back, and I am on a new mission for Goodyear. It seems that some folks, get this, think all tires are created equal. Well, wrong you are, Sparky. People who depend on their tires choose Goodyear. Heck, the Stealth Bomber has Goodyear tires. They're the number one choice in Canada for school buses and police cars, too. That's me in the back. <laughs> of course, you know, conducting a tire inspection. But that's not the point, folks. Think about your tires. Think safe. Think Goodyear. I was complimenting them on their badges. I'm off to London, then Paris, Prague, Hong Kong, and back through Seattle. I'll be home in three weeks. Aren't you forgetting something? How could I ever forget that? Thanks to Fido's GSM technology and its world phones, only Fido follows you to Europe, Asia, and over 4,000 cities in the U.S. Call me on my Fido. From this picture, it doesn't look the, like the mouthpiece fell out, Bob. It looks like Bowden spit it out. He lost it three times in that round. He had a point deducted. So it's a 10-8 round for Ross. Bowden not throwing many punches. That's not an option. Bowden wasn't even listening to his corner, Teddy, in between rounds three and four. He's not giving him strategy, Stop. and he was just, break. like, looking away. No, well, they're talking go. about the Don't wrong thing as far as he's concerned. They're talking about trying to win. I think it's fairly evident that Bolden is in there to survive. A sneaky right hand there from Bolden. As Roars, who's taking all the chances, was coming in. you got to remember now... Just like the fight we had earlier in the night with the great upset. And the Olympian Craig was knocked out when he was having all his way. You don't want to get too careless here now if you're Ross. You don't want to take for granted that Bolton doesn't have arms, that he can't throw back suddenly. The one difference, though, Teddy, with Craig, he was winging away. Whereas Ross constantly keeps his defense up. Even when he throws his power shots, he's pretty quick to get back into a defensive posture. He's always on edge a little bit. Good point. He's always Give aware stop, that stop, something could be coming at him. Step back. Craig Don't had lost that me. awareness. Craig thought he was on a heavy bed. Craig was just winging with no thought of something coming back until it was too late. The thing, too, about Craig that should have maybe had him a little bit more cautious is the fact that he hit Davis in that fight with a lot of good shots. Davis never was even...
going to take him. Manuel Zapata didn't have an easy time here, Max, but this guy should be a little more marketable at this point in his career, wouldn't you think? Well, the, the poor turnout, if Roy Jones is promoting this fight, that's his responsibility to put the meat in the seats, as they say, and a poor turnout, that's Roy Jones' responsibility. He, the promoter doesn't show up for the fight. I'm disappointed in Roy for that. He, he calls himself a businessman. He should take care of that business right there. Junior, meanwhile, look, a lot of people would like to see him retire for his health. I'm one of those people. However, he does have two wins against Marco Antonio Barrera, who just beat Nassim Hamed. Stylistically, he'll always be a tough matchup for Barrera, so you can't really criticize Jones for going after that carrot because it's potentially big money for him. Junior Jones, by the way, unanimous decision. Close on one of the cards, 95-94, but he gets a win over Manuel Zapata, so he gets that win. Remember, he was thought about as sort of like a washed-up guy going in against Barrera. He was the opponent going up against Barrera. And he knocked him, him out in the first fight. Realistically had a knockout, you're right, even though the, the corner threw in the towel, and then beat him again in a close fight. Meantime, speaking of Roy Jones Jr., He's back in the ring and will take on a man that we've seen here on Friday Night Fights in Julio Gonzalez. Uh, Gonzalez, of course, had a tremendous fight against Julian Letterlow here on Friday Night Fights. So the undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world has taken on a guy who we've seen before here on this program. And we're not the only ones that were paying attention to that bout. Suddenly, watching ESPN one Friday night, I saw this... Uh, of all things Mexican light heavyweight, I saw one of the best fights I've ever seen, uh, Julio against uh, Letalo, uh, where Julio came back and uh, was able to beat him. And I said, boy, does this guy have heart. Well, that's good. I think that he went down, Gonzalez went down, looked, uh, eyes rolling back in his head, got back up and won that fight. But fighting Roy Jones Jr. Yeah, he's going to need that heart. Mm. I mean, first of all, it's not a bad fight for Roy because who is there? Who else is there? Do you want to see Roy Jones in a boring fight against a, li a guy like Eric Harding, who I think deserves another shot at him? Mikloshevsky obviously isn't going to fight him. So who else is there? Gonzalez has two good wins on national television in the last year, in the last 12 months or so. Uh, he's an exciting guy, as Bob Arum said, with a lot of heart. He's not wrong about that. And he's going to force the action. He's a tall, rangy guy. He's going to force Roy to fight. Having said that, he has no shot to beat Roy Jones, but then again, no one really does. Go do your Roy Jones. You go over there and yeah. blip. Roy gives you the blip. That <laughs> Want to see it again, as Ali used to say? That's, that's a good impression. Remember, Slick Rick Williams, Ricardo Williams, really the main event there in Cincinnati, the main event here for television purposes in Friday Night Fights is coming up next. Bronco McCart taking on Michael Lerma. World-class stuff. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller High Life. The main event is next.